Welcome to the place where the Formula One World Championship began back in 1950. It's Silverstone, Friday morning here in Great Britain, and that means it's time for practice. We should expect to see some very large crowds here this weekend, as we do every year at the British Grand Prix. It's a popular racing circuit, it has huge fan support and is well liked by the drivers and teams. Many of the teams are based in Britain and so Silverstone is their home race. It's one of the most historic circuits on the F1 calendar and one that all the teams enjoy racing at. Not only is Silverstone one of the oldest circuits in the Formula One World Championship, but it's also home to some of the most iconic corners and none more so than maggots and beckets. This is a high-speed sequence of left, right, left, tightening corners that lead into chapel and then, of course, the long hangar straight. The high speeds of this sequence demands extreme skill and precision from the driver. Getting this wrong will affect the momentum all the way down the hangar straight, which is also a DRS zone. What is going on, guys? Arab here. Welcome back to my F1 2015 career mode. We're back with part number nine here today for the British Grand Prix at the Silverstone Circuit, my home Grand Prix. But obviously, we are driving a Sebastian Vettel, so we're sort of wanting to cause an upset here today, really, in this episode. And in practice, well, we started off on the obviously the prime tire practicing, and I must say, this tire is very, very disgusting. It's, it's a lot like uh, the grey wall hard tyre from F1 2012. It just takes a lot of time to kind of rubber in and heat up. And you can see here that uh, right at the moment we're at P7. The lap time's not amazing. And it took me till my sixth lap, as you can see now, till we actually got our competitive time in. We're in P3 at the moment on that last lap we did. But now on this final lap, on lap six, this is when I felt the tyres really started to finally grip in, heat up and actually perform at their optimum. So... Quite a long time and quite good information to know for the race. You know, we get P1 here now in the practice session and quite good information to know for the race ahead. Obviously that, you know, we will have to wait about six laps-ish for the time, lap times to really come on the prime tyres. So that's something we need to think about. But generally feeling very good for Silverstone. Done some time trial on this game. So I haven't come into this session blind for once like I did for Austria. So I'm looking forward to qualifying. Let's get straight into that. Welcome to this afternoon's qualifying session here at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. It's going to be an exciting afternoon as the teams battle it out for the prize of pole. Silverstone is steeped in racing history and we can definitely say that every track position will be hotly contested in the next few minutes. Over the last few years there's been a range of winners from Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari. And I think those are the teams we need to look out for again in today's qualifying session. So here we are in qualifying for the British Grand Prix and this is where we have to do the business, get that one lap in hooked up together. I'm feeling very confident, more so than Austria, because as I said in Austria, um, you know, I went straight into that without any practice whatsoever, even on time trial on that game. Whereas Silverstone, I've done a few, fair few laps on time trial already. So I'm feeling very dialed in already to this circuit in terms of the one lap pace. So let's see what it's going to be. Right now we're at the end of our first flying lap. As you can see, Kimi Raikkonen, our teammate, has set the fast lap of the session so far. So he's on provisional pole position so far, doing really well. Surprised to see Kimi doing so well. Obviously in real life he's not such a great qualifier, but on this game right now he's really pulling together. But let's see what the lap time is going to be on our first flying lap. It's going to be provisional pole so far, so that is fantastic stuff. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right now, going on to our second flying lap, starting that lap. Right now, you can see we're down in P2 now. So Rosberg has beat us. And so, so far, he's on provisional pole. Up into Rich Mix. Chuck the car into the first corner. Get a very wide into the, on the exit there. Maybe could have got, taken a tighter line. Now down to third. Momentarily second. Back up to third. And then chucking it left into second gear as we go on towards that back straight towards that lovely section of Luffield. Very hard, very tricky to really get on the power. You have to feather the throttle quite well. And now we're going to cut later on to lap through the old first corner. Cops there through. Just don't want to go too wide. Otherwise, we will get a track limit warning. Obviously, in real life, they were very harsh about it in the real life uh, Grand Prix about it during qualifying. Through Mackens and Beckett's lovely section here at Silverstone. One of the best on the calendar. And now we're still in P2 at the moment. Rosberg seemingly has yet to set another good lap time. So we'll see what it's going to be. But I speak too soon now. We're down to P3. Hamilton is now set the provisional pole time. So he's in pole position at the moment. Rosberg second. 1-2 for Mercedes. What is this going to be? It's going to be pole position for the British Grand Prix. And I am going ecstatic. The crowd probably isn't. Because remember, we're driving a Sebastian Vettel. We're a German at the Silverstone Grand Prix, so they're probably not too thrilled about it. But I'm absolutely thrilled. That's awesome to see. We've taken this Ferrari to pole position. That's awesome. 
That's a great qualifying performance there by Sebastian Vettel. It's going to put him in a really strong position for the race tomorrow. We certainly appreciate how good a qualifying lap that was. Truly spectacular. Now, can he deliver the same type of performance tomorrow? I, for one, cannot wait to find out. Welcome to Silverstone, home of the British Grand Prix. This iconic track held the very first World Championship Formula One race back in 1950, and it's a firm favourite amongst the fans and drivers alike. It's Sebastian Vettel who's in the driving seat in today's race. He's on pole, and he'll be hoping he can get to the first corner unscathed, because if he does, he could be on his way to a race win. It really was a great performance from him yesterday, and I think he'll be feeling very confident that he can push on and win today's race. Unless he has car trouble or a bit of bad luck, he should be untouchable. Fernando Alonso has been consistently outqualifying his teammate this season, once again underlining his talent as what many think is the most complete driver on the grid. Fernando is such a great driver. He always seems to outperform the car, and this season he's comfortably outperforming his teammate in qualifying too. His one-lap pace has been excellent. It is go time here at the Silverstone circuit for the British Grand Prix. We're on pole position, obviously my home Grand Prix, so I want to do well. And that, if we do well, it will cause a bit of an upset, but I don't really care. So let's try and see what we can do off pole. Overcast conditions, so the track conditions might be a bit colder. But let's go to those five red lights. We go to three, four, now five, and we wait... And we are off, waiting for a bit of an age there, up into second gear, third now, looks like Hamilton has got off really well from second place, he's up into first, Rosberg jumps me by, come back at him, we bang tyres there, oh god, very very close, lucky not to make a big impact there, as we did really bang tyres there on the right hand side of my car, but now Hamilton's into first place, the crowd is probably going wild at this point, and we're into second place, not the best start, but a much better one than we've had in previous races you must say. And as you can see, the track is so, the, the weather is so dark, the track looks so much darker than it did in yesterday's Saturday qualifying session. So the track conditions may be a lot colder, so that will mean there's a bit of an understeer in the entire circuit. Maybe a little bit of lack of grip, maybe, I don't know if it rained overnight, that might have made the track a little bit green. So we'll have to see about that, but at the moment, Hamilton, look at the grip he's got. He's stricken away, that Mercedes really flexing his muscles here, and obviously Hamilton, being British, he's going to have some, you know, British kind of advantage here, the kind of crowd giving us some energy. Energy, that little bit extra driver needs to really perform well his home Grand Prix. But now we've cut onto lap, um, lap five. We're in second place still. Kimi Raikkonen, our teammate, has now jumped Rosberg. So he's done fantastically. And he's in third place right now. But not so fantastic for me because it looks like he's actually got some really decent pace now. Because he's right up the back of us. And he might have DRS here. I'm not too sure. I'll we'll have to look at it. We're going to have to be wary of him. But it's a good thing that he's overtaken Rosberg there. So it gives us, gives us a little bit less pressure. Because the hope is that if he does go for a move at least, it will be a bit more clean than it might be with Rosberg. So now we've got onto lap 9 now, so we're going towards Luffield, and so far so good, still in second place though, and you can see Hamilton is so far in the distance, so I think the win might have just gone out the window here guys for Silverstone, because Hamilton just in another world of his own there, and that Mercedes just, just really just jetting off into the distance. So now on the exit of Luffield here, up into 4th, into 5th, you can see Raikkonen still very much there within about a second, I think Rosberg's also catching him up. And then behind him, I think, is Daniel Ricciardo's Red Bull. But now off the back of Beckett, onto this back straight. We can see Raikkonen in our mirrors closing up on us. He will have DRS, definitely. And now here he comes on the right side of the circuit. He's going to maybe stream past me. We're going to try and have to outbreak him round the outside here. Into fourth gear, late fourth gear there. Try and take a late exit corner. Raikkonen's got me. He's just about to squeeze me out. I've got a little bit wide now towards down to that last chicane. We lock up horribly. Double lock up. We've lost the rear into first gear. And we've just managed to keep second. Somehow, we completely avoid avoided Raikkonen, and Raikkonen thankfully looks like he actually saw me in the mirrors and maybe ducked out a little bit, but my god that was a huge lock up, huge lock up on the front two tyres, double lock up there, and the only way I can really explain it is just I was concentrating too much on Raikkonen in the car ahead to miss my braking point, so complete huge muck up and late braking there, lost the rear car, the rear of the car, and you know we just managed thankfully to not hit Raikkonen and keep it also in second place, which is a plus point. It would have been a plus anyway if we didn't even smash into Raikkonen, but we managed to keep second. But I speak too soon because you can see Raikkonen now on the back of me with the slipstream. Will he get me into the entry towards the Luffield section? Into third gear on the left hander, just parking on the apex here. Going quite slowly actually, as you'll maybe see. We've got a little bit wide, but we're going to come back onto the apex hopefully and squeeze out Kimi. Just going a little bit wide here and a bit slowly through that section as my tyres are starting to go off. 
Raikkonen's maybe going to go side by side with me. Hopefully we'll be able to get him back into the cops. He's still side by side, but we will jump to that apex with cops. No harm done now. But now onto the back straight. Rosberg now has overtaken Kimi Raikkonen. He's going to try and overtake me. So he's going to try and overtake both Ferraris. Raikkonen on the right hand side. I'm in the middle of both of them. We go around the outside of Raikkonen. Rosberg's been squeezed out. We just make the corner in second place. And Rosberg's out. Rosberg spun out. We have to look at a replay here. Ricardo coming through. Oh, God. That's the contact there. You can see right there, Ricardo comes out of nowhere, just doesn't spot Rosberg and just RKO's him, basically, just off the circuit. So while we re-overtook Rosberg and managed to defend from Raikkonen, uh, Rosberg was RKO'd out of nowhere from, uh, by Ricardo. But now we're straight into the pit stops. That's something you didn't see right there with uh, Ricardo moving into the pit lane. You saw that both of us dived in. So the Ferrari are going to have to double stack. I've sort of screwed Kimi over here. But the reason I picked this lap is simply because on that straight, R Rosberg really closed up onto both us Ferraris far too easily for my liking. So I thought, you know what, we have to pit. The tyres are going off way too much. So now we come to lap 13. We've been on these tyres for a little bit now, and they're starting to heat up finally. But we've got a yellow flag situation, so it looks like some of the AI cars are scrapping a little bit ahead. Good to see. But yeah, these tyres are starting to heat up a little bit. We're in third place at the moment, so we've theoretically lost... Uh, a place here and I think that's a place to bot us as you can see up ahead in second place right in front of a force injury I think that is up ahead so we've lost the place to bot us somehow but I have a feeling that he's not on the same exact tyre strategy as and he might be going on the primes first perhaps or maybe just on a different sort of strategy. Maybe he's going one extra stop. I'm not too sure. But I don't think we had that bad of a pace to be jumped by Bottas. And uh, I say that because Bottas was behind all of us. Behind me, Kimi, Rosberg and Ricardo. So I'm pretty sure he wasn't. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's on a different tyre strategy. But so now we can't lap 15. By now the tyres are fully starting to heat up. And I'm trying to get the groove a little bit on these prime tyres. They're still not feeling amazing here on a heavy, heavier fuel still. We're about uh, well over halfway of this Grand Prix now. We're into second place now as Bottas pits now. So, um, yeah, I think Bottas is definitely on a different pit strategy. If he's not, then we're going to maybe have to look at that towards the end of the Grand Prix. But we've got 10 laps to go now for this Grand Prix. So not long now, but as you can see, Hamilton is nowhere to be seen. We have literally we can't even think about the win at this point. On to lap 18 now, through the final corner. Still in second place. Kimi Raikkonen in third. I believe Ricardo is then behind him in fourth place. And then Bottas behind him, or it might be Bottas ahead of Ricardo. Uh, I'm not too sure where Rosberg is at this point. He got spun out, so he must have lost a lot of time there through there. So now into this next section, the village section at the moment. The tyres are going off a little bit. And as you can clearly read there on the subtitles, Jeff telling us that our tyres are pretty much spent. So, and, and that Kimi is catching us by a second. So, that is a little bit of a worry and a bit of a challenge. Here on lap 21, here's the situation. Here's the sit rep. Kimi is catching us by a lap a second. He is currently not going to catch us by the end of the race, just about. But that is if we keep our tyres at this good level. Now, for these next few laps, I'm going to have to really go max tyre save. Going to have to stay off the kerbs. Really watch the throttle, change up early to save a little bit of fuel as well, but save the engine wear, try and get as much straight line speed as we can on the straights. We don't want to wear out the engine, so we don't want to lose any miles per hour on the straights. You can see him probably here on the engine, going very, very cautiously through these corners, really just trying to tyre save quite well. It's quite successful. I feel like tyre saving is one of my best kind of assets. It was back on F1 2012 when you could really save the tyres. On F1 2013 and 2014, obviously, we found out that tyre wear was scripted. It seems like on F1 2015, it's a little bit scripted but you can seem to actually wear, bring them out a lot more if you are kind of actual you know doing some tire, tire savings so I'm quite happy with how the game's kind of been modeled this year finally kind of my best kind of asset in racing unfortunately I'm not the fastest out there but I can t save tires that's one thing I know and I can save some fuel so it's nice to see that finally on this game that's being rewarded in that sense like it is in real life so Lewis Hamilton has won the British Grand Prix but at the moment we're on the final lap here we've been saving our tires quite well I don't know how we've done it. We've taken these laps, uh, these tyres, 10 more laps than Jeff really predicted. Kimi Raikkonen's right up our chuff now. Is he going to make a move right into the chicane? It would be a very controversial move if he does, but we're going to actually come through the chicane. Kimi actually pits right now, as you can see on the minimap. Very strange indeed. He pits on the last lap. He still managed to get third place. We're still going to come in second, but just a very odd way to end a Grand Prix for Kimi. But we get second there in the British Grand Prix. That is not too bad. That's a really a great solid position.
great drive from the world champion Lewis Hamilton. On days like today, he's just unbeatable in that Mercedes. They have been working really hard and today they got their reward. Superb work from both the team and its driver. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time though, goodbye. So there we are, guys. That is the end of the British Grand Prix. We end up in second place. Lewis Hamilton gets first. I think second was probably our best finishing position, you know, there. Considering the pace of that Mercedes and Hamilton, you know, connected together, I think definitely this is the best of the rest we could have hoped for. And beating our teammate once again. So do smash that like button if you did enjoy that episode. Comment below what you thought. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for daily Formula 1 content. It's all going very, very nice at this moment in time. And I'm loving this career mode, guys. Love producing it for you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode, guys. Again, give it a like if you did enjoy it. Comment below what you thought. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for daily F1. I've been Aaron for Home Josh today, and I'll see you guys next time.